back for part two of the deep dive into Donk's incredible James Bond collection. Enjoy. Welcome friends, welcome friends, welcome one and all. The Bond Vivant Blair Ballard very much at your service. I do hope that you're all in the finest of fine forms. Now we are back for part two of our pouring over this treasure trove of goodies from Donk's modest collection. We have Donk once again. Hello. And we have Rob. Still here. Still here indeed. <laughs> now we've got a couple of tables from the Brosnan era to start us off with. These are all from Goldeneye. They are. And there are some very, very famous, I mean, I've got to look at this one first because this is absolutely, for me, iconic. Now, where was this from? That was from the pre-title sequence of the Golden Eye, and that's what Pierce had Velcroed to the front of his combat vest. This way, or I suppose it would be if he's, um, yeah. yeah, 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 I mean, that's just so cool. So tell us a bit about the story behind this. Well, um, this was an auction piece. Um, Angel was the costumers. They were actually selling all their stuff off. And one of the things was Rodden's combat vest, uh, which had been e incorrectly tagged as being Sean Bean's, or I probably wouldn't have been able to secure it. And the holster came with it. Um, the PPK was secured not long afterwards um, from pretty much the same source. Uh, <laughs> but that's, this is, a, um, is this resin or? No, that's rubber, and that's actually identical to this one, which it was cast off. Oh, okay, let's have a look at that one now. But I mean, that's, I've always wanted, I've got one of the jackets, the, you know, they've made several of the yeah. kind of, um, I've always wanted to get the rigging, so maybe we'll have a chat later on and find out where I can <laughs> grab one. So this is, the, this is the one he used predominantly in, the, in this in the pre-title sequence. That's here. actually a blank fire top venting gun. He used that as well as oh, the uh, firearm. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I used to have one of these back in the day. Yeah, and the, the, the actual, obviously all the, the, the blast comes at the top there. That's right, and if you look on the rubber one, and you just re it, you can actually see there's the channel and there's the uh, hole where the thing will actually flash from. Oh, wow. Is this Umarex or what's... Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had this very same gun back in the day. That's so cool. I used to muck around. In fact, with, we just found out today, unfortunately, Mary Quant has passed away and I, I was... I was at school with her son, and um, in fact, this is quite evocative because we, Orlando and I, um, we both, both bought guns. I bought a PPK, and he had a, he had a, um, a, a Magnum, I think. Um, and um, that's why I remember this. That's very bizarre that we've uh, it's crossed our past today again. But um, so why was they, why did they use this particular one instead of having? Did they not have other blank fires they could use? Well, the interesting thing is, you've already seen this previously, but this is the firearm that Brosnan used on Tomorrow Never Dies, and that was also a blank fire. Oh, okay. This looks slightly different. Um, the reason for that is really unknown. It's a bit like the fact that when Wolf or Umarex did the um, licensed P99 and a PP, well, they already had a PPK. Why they didn't actually do a Bond edition to this day, I've never understood that. It would have made one hell of a collectible. Absolutely, absolutely. But, and the silence, the silence actually works. Um, doesn't work as a science, it doesn't have baffles inside it. I mean, basically, it's a lump of tube with a, a piece of studding on the end which has been bored out. It, it, but a blank can discharge. Sure, sure. Oh, that's very cool. Although not anymore because it's decommissioned. Oh, sure, 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 sure. Um, now, what do we have here in this particular holster? Why is that one special? This is the shoulder holster that Pierce wore on Goldeneye. It was made by someone I. In the book, I put BS holsters, but I think most people know that that's Bruce Stevens. And 
it's a beautiful piece of level work, which he actually, which what Pierce wore under his uh, Brioni suits. Um, you never saw it on screen, unfortunately, but it, it's just an absolutely lovely fit where the Galco that most people believe is what Bond or Brosnan is actually associated with is a much sort of heavier leather and doesn't look so good under a suit. It's so, yes, he did wear the Galcos and they were, they were custom made for him and they were also used on Tomorrow Never Dies, but this was his preferential holster because it was such a good fit and it's so lightweight, but it's never actually seen, unfortunately. Let's go and look at that, this looks absolutely, oh, it's so light, isn't it? It's just a lovely made holster. Bruce Stevens holsters, wonderful. And the gun inside? That's the stunt. Oh, okay. Rubber stunt. Oh, okay, great. Oh. Which but, you actually see when um, Muffy Wade has it shoved in his gut, it's that actual stunt that's... <laughs> oh, whoa. Thank you. <laughs> like you said, drop it. All right, in London, April's a spring month, whereas in St. Petersburg, we're freezing our butts off. Is that close enough for government work? No. Show me the road. Please, no. All right, all right, all right. Huh? Muffy? Third wife. Jack Wade, CIA. James Bond. Stiff ass bread. <laughs> That's a nice move. Nice car. Well, this baby hasn't let me down yet. She's like a little bitch, but she gets you there. <laughs> hey, Bond. You do any gardening? Yeah. <laughs> Went, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you and your stiff ass brick. Oh, wow. That's so cool. Now, again, this next one is a very, very familiar, very famous. It's an AKSU? AK. What's AKS 74U. Oh, Kalashnikov. Used by? Used by Pierce Brosnan and used by Famke Jensen. Oh, it's so cool. So it's just used in the pre titles with, with Brosnan. It was used in the pre-titles, exactly, um, but it was also when Pierce is climbing in and out of the tank, he's oh. using that one from the archive room. And the interesting thing about it, it was a gun that was actually deactivated pre-production, so the actors could actually handle a firearm and they didn't have to worry about having any sort of issues. And it's documented to that effect. That's uber cool. And then Famke Janssen as well. Famke used it as any on the top. Oh, so cool. I was only as a gear bit on the top. Yes, indeedy. Oh. And how cool is that? Guys, if you do, if you're appreciating these videos, if you do like, please do hit the like and subscribe buttons. Smash those, uh, yeah, the notifications buttons so that you won't miss another video because um, we're getting more of these videos coming along soon. But isn't this just so cool? I mean, it's, oh. And it's, was it in use by, sorry, Rob, there you go. Was it in use by, um, by the Russian special force like Spetsnaz or was it just? Yeah, precisely. Um, and it was also used by Daniel Craig in Tomb Raider. So. <laughs> that very one? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. I love the way these guns get passed around and there's, you know, they've got history and you can, uh, you know, the, and the Bond connection as well. It's one of those things where he, he never fires it on Tomb Raider. And so they, they already had a gun in the armory that was deactivated previously used on Bond. And so Daniel used it. Oh, that's very cool. So we're going to stick with Piers Brosnan now. We're going to go on to... Uh, Tomorrow Never Dies. Oh, we still got, oh, <laughs> we still have one guy. Now this, um, Sean Bean. Yep. Sean Bean in the pre-title sequence. That's right, and then Pierce used it at the end on the uh, radar dish. Oh, in the, the. Without the, the science room. Oh, that's so cool. And it's a Browning, yes? That is a Browning BDA, but through continuity, you also occasionally see a BDM. R uh, yeah, there were. <laughs> Not too hot on that. I mean, it's like a Browning high power, yeah? Or is it like a it, more it's modern? It's basically, version? yeah. It's, it's the next generation high power. Um, it didn't prove very popular, and it's a very rare gun. It's next yeah. For England, James. For England, Alec. <laughs> oh, man, it's so cool. Oh, man, geek overload. Oh, oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. Anyway, more, more Brosnan to come. Indeed, there is.
So we're back with Brosnan part two. We most definitely are. Um, so Tomorrow Never Dies. Are these all from Tomorrow? Oh, guys, spot the odd one out here. <laughs> Any ideas? And it's not, the, it's a silver one, but not for the reason you might think, because we actually forgot to include this in the last table, didn't we? Because this was used by Xenia on top. It certainly was. The scene? The scene where she's shooting the pilots of the Tiger helicopter. I think I've, what, I've gone to heaven or, you know. <laughs> uh, not yet. I have a small surprise from your friends back at the barracks. You think I've gone to heaven? Not yet. Um, obviously, that's the gun that Maud Adams used on Octopussy without the suppressor. Yeah, sure. It's great that they, you know, again, re yeah. reusing. It's great that these guns get, you know, seen in multiple films and with multiple actors. It's, I love the silence. It's really kind of like, it's very, very dinky for, for, for a lady's gun. Well, Fantastic. if you actually watch the footage, when she fires it, she closes her eyes. Oh, bless. <laughs> <laughs> right. Which we go for first um, on the, the Tomorrow Never Dies guns? Uh, well, um, you've previously seen the PPK, but it's just there to be with its oh, friends. Oh, PPK, this one here, yeah. Uh -huh. um, yep. Obviously, that was used on Goldeneye. Uh, Pierce also used it on Tomorrow Never Dies. Oh, this is just very cool. Yeah. <coughs> right. And despite common belief, most people think that Brosnan wore um, a holster called a Galco executive in Tomorrow Never Dies in the hotel room, which, funny enough, was shot at the uh, Stoke Poges. And he actually wore this. Uh, these were bespoke for Brosnan. Um, it's smaller than a standard executive. The standard executive has a strap on the top here, but this has actually got it fitted lower down and it makes it hang differently. They also reduce the size of the lever, but what is unique about this is it comes in so tight to the arm that it, it just looks natural. If you actually look at a standard Galco, it, it just hangs down. And this hangs at a slight angle and I've tried it, and it's actually much better for drawing. But, yeah, okay, perfect. And yet, yeah, only Brosnan had those. <laughs> uh -huh. Talk about holsters, this one's another special one, isn't it? This took a long time to find. It, you see it on screen. I saw it at an exhibition of Bond props once, but I never actually knew what it was. And this is what Brosnan wears with his P99 on the stealth boat. Ah, right. Um, sometimes it appears to be a belt holster like this, and another time he's wearing it on the other side and it looks like a shoulder holster. But it is a totally bespoke holster. It's been made out of other things. Um, it's just a very, very rare item. Um, I don't know of another one. Cool, very cool. Now talking about um, Stealth Boat, that's Hector and Koch MP5K. It is. Brosnan. It is. Ah, uh, let's have a look. Ooh. This is when he's kind of like, and uh, Waylon used one as well, didn't she? Or did she? She used MP5s, but I don't recall her using the MP5K. But, you know, sort of, you know, wasn't he like kind of like blind firing and... Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's very cool. This takes back to, you know, back to the SAS and, you know, who does wins. And yeah. They use mp 5 I mean, not with the, I don't think it's the, the, the front um, grip here, but just an iconic gun. Very cool. And a great scene as well. There we go. Right. What's next, Donk? Well, um, again, all Brosnans. You've previously seen this. This is V1680. It's the gun that Brosnan used on Tomorrow Never Dies, used it on The World Is Not Enough, and he used it on Not Die Another Day. But he also, used, uh, Daniel Craig, used that on Tomb Raider, without the science for I hasten to add. And this is, the, this is what sparked off the most famous gun in the world? Precisely. That's what started it all. <laughs> it's just... Iconic, absolutely iconic. Right, we've got two more um, P99s here. This one is a blank fire gun uh, Brosnan used on Tomorrow Never Dies, and he also used this one on The World Is Not Enough. Um, it's got the same iconic silencer. Oh, very cool, uber cool. Do you have a favorite, I mean, favorite piece, Rob? You know, of, of you know, Donk's collection. Yes, Can you tell Sterling AR one hundred and eighty. If you haven't seen the, if you haven't seen the video, we'll we'll put a link up. But yeah. 
piece of engineering genius. It is, um, by the fact that you can't see it in the film, which I think is an utter shame. Um, but um, in the book, it clearly explains the working mechanisms of it. Um, it should have been in the film, in my opinion. Hopefully one day they might, re, you know, do a new version with it in. Hopefully. Yeah, they should. They should at least have the you know, yeah. deleted scenes and then, you know... They should show the deleted scenes. Because they scene. actually filmed it, didn't they? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it does appear on screen, but the transformation doesn't. Mm. Yeah. And that, that's the shame of it, because what CS put together is just amazing. I mean, as I've said previously, there are two of them. Eon have the other one. Um, it's just an incredible piece of engineering. It's mm. kind of Lazar and Q yeah, all which, rolled into one. Which is who really CS is. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. One last... This, oh, this is a, a stunt, yeah? This is a rubber... That is resin and rubber. Um, very rare one. There, there weren't too many uh, resin and rubber ones. Um, it's cast off the uh, blank fire pistol, the pack. Um, it actually was the first P99 I ever owned. Um, not long after Tomorrow Never Dies came out, I tracked that down and I'll be perfectly honest, um, I got it from a model shop, very close to where the uh, car park sequence was filmed, 150 quid, no documentation whatsoever, and then when t one turned up at the first Christie's auction it went for 9,000. Mm. So, it was a good, a good buy then. Yeah. It was a good 150 yeah. quid, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, we've got more Brosnan to come, have we not? We have. OK, let's... Next Brosnan table. So, final Brosnan Fandango. What have we got here? Talk us through the first piece. Well, we had the steer TMP that we oh, looked yeah, at on the well. previous video. And that's what Brosnan used in the Caviar Factory, so we won't go into too much detail. And obviously, now Angelina Jolie used it on Tomb Raider. But the Parahawk pilots also carried the same oh, weapon. Yes, well, that, yeah, absolutely. Oh, this, it's a really nice gun. We mentioned the, yeah, the balance it, it's before. In, it's an incredibly comfortable gun. Isn't it? It's very cool, very, very cool. Yeah, because in the, in the Caviar Factory, there's continuity. They, kind of, the editing was a bit odd, iffy because he was firing this and then he fired, but he got this from the henchman, but he was firing his. Yeah, I mean, basically, he was firing his P99. Um, he does relieve one of the henchmen of it, but you don't really see that happen. You just see the guy hit the floor, up still holding the thing. But the other gun, he was using the... He was using this one. Ah, there we go. Without the science at that time, but this is another variant of the Wolf of P99. That's a third generation P99, where previously he'd used a second generation on Tomorrow Never Dies. And then the difference is the shape of the trigger guard. Yeah, it looks a bit longer on this one, is that right? It's straighter. Straighter, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But very cool. But this is the one he's using the Caviar Factory as well. Yeah. Okay, cool. Right, and then there's another P99 here. Um, also used in the Caviar Factory and also the Russian Silo. That one is a blank fire pistol. Okay, cool. So this one he's pulling on Robbie Carlyle. Well, or... again, you've got continuity going on there because he's pointing a stunt at him. He's pointing a firearm at him, which you've got the different side trigger guard. He's pointing the blank fire at him, and it's all happening in the same scene. You can actually see it all going on. The silence is changing from that type to the funnel type that's used on Tomorrow Never Dies. Mm. So the, there was a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> and this one here, this one, what's this one here? Oh, wow, it's a stunt. That's right. a stunt, and that's the shoulder holster that he wore in The World Is Not Enough. Right, OK, cool. And the holster, is that a unique one? Yeah, uh, made by Bruce Stevens as the uh, oh, yeah. PPK holster was made by for the uh, Goldeneye. It's nice and compact, very nice. And one last holster, this is a very special one here, isn't it? Yeah, this is an interesting one. This is what Brosnan wears in the virtuality sequence. This was a bespoke holster that he wore for that sequence. Uh, you see it very clearly on screen from the moment he sort of cleaning his gun to the moment he's going out with Robinson shooting the terrorists who've taken over MI6, supposedly.
like mentioning it, 007, but a perfect marksman isn't really supposed to shoot his own boss. Check the replay. You'll find he's dead, and she's only got a flesh wound. There's always an excuse, isn't there, 00? Uh, he also wore it with the lovely Rosamund Pike when uh, she did various things to his gun, took his oh, ammunition out, etc. Yeah, under the pillow. So um, it's so kind of you to do that. But the reason that's also quite unique about this, this is the actual holster that Daniel Craig wore for his screen test for Casino Royal. Oh, wow. He wore a Brosnan cast off, basically. Um, it's what got on the roll, I yeah. think. We can do yeah, it's, it's a lucky holster. So there you go. Um, that's pretty much the Brosnan ensemble. I mean, this pistol was also used without this silencer on Die Another Day. Okay. Um, it was also used on Tomb Raider. These guns get around. Yeah, <laughs> rugby passing them. To... So now we're going to move on to DC. We are definitely moving on to 2006, yes. Okay. See you in a moment. Okay, now we've got a, well, a smorgasbord of Daniel Craig wonderfulness. Um, we're going to start from this end. Please do. Okay. Pop quiz, hot shots. Where do we think this was? This was Venicene. It was. Henchman. It is. Ah, no, um, very good, very good. I've read the book. I'm just very... <laughs> I didn't prepare myself for this. Um, so what kind of gun is it? That is a SIG P226. Okay, cool. And it's a stunt. It's rubbish. It is. Yeah, it's... But very, you know, distinctive kind of... Yeah, it's very cool. It's not the same SIG that's... Not the same SIG that, that Daniel Craig uses in... Uh, Daniel does use a P226, yeah. yeah. Oh. I'm getting good at this. If it's the same one or not, I don't know. But I'm, you know, you're rubbing off on me, I think, uh, Don. There's no answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> Steady. We're okay, a family show. Um, what's this one? Oh, right. What's this one here? That is a stunt from Casino Royal, obviously. Yeah. And that's, bas that's basically there for Tess Blue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tess Blue, there you go. That's, a very, that's, that's very soft. It's incredibly soft, yeah. It's almost like it's full of air. And it's, but it screws on as well. Yeah. That's, that's so cool. That's, you know, because they do metal barrels and... Yeah, precisely. They're, they're all cut um, M10 thread, so the, the silencers are interchangeable. But very cool. So this was used in which scene, sorry? That was used in the sinking building sequence. Oh, in the yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it kind of goes together with the other, yep. the other one. This one here? That's the practical P99 of the stunt that you just handled. And again, used for the same sequence. Oh, that's very cool. I, I love the silencer. And it was also used for the uh, Dryden pre-title sequence, because that's known as the Dryden can. This is the Dryden can, folks. <clears throat> so, you know, yeah, yes, considerably. Very good. Made you feel it, did he? You needn't worry. The second is... Yes. Considerably. Ah, oh, that's so cool. Again, another one for Tess. <laughs> another one for Tess. There you are, Tess. Tess Blue. But, um, I mean, this was designed in the... Uh, it was Czech, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, there was an armoury in the Czech Republic um, called Flash Armourers. They're not around anymore, so you can't get anything from them. Mm -hmm. And Richard Hooper of Crown Tower, he commissioned them to make the silences. And that's what they came up with. I don't know if Richard gave them a design or not, but it became very iconic. It's absolutely, I mean, absolutely iconic. This one here, Olga Kurilenko. Yep, that's from Quantum of Solace, and that's a Rohrberg, and they don't, they're not around anymore either, as far as I'm aware. It's very, very distinctive, very sort of... And this is a stunt, obviously. Yeah, that's right. But very cool. Very cool and very small. I mean, yeah. Deadly girls. Um, Indeedy. Um, this holster is really lovely weathering. That is a very famous holster from Spectre. Right. Which, uh, what's, so which scenes was this, were this used in Inspector then? Uh, pretty much most of them where he's got a holster. Oh. <laughs> Ask a silly Especially question. Especially he's sitting in his um, flat. Oh, yes. Drinking, and you can see it over yeah. his shoulder. 
Oh, very cool. Um, that was made by um, CS's apprentice, funny enough. Um, very, very talented armourer. Um, very, very talented leathersmith. It's He's made all of Daniel's holsters. Beautifully crafted. Very, very cool. Very, very famous. And you've got it. You've got, yeah. Eon must be like, yeah. Oh, let's not get into that. <laughs> <laughs> this one here. That, again, was used on Spectre. And that is, well, I call it the pants gun because Daniel had it shoved down the front of his pants. Okay. Ah, do I need to be disinfected now? Are we okay? Um, it also looks like the one he uses in the snow scenes. Exactly. Ah, it's this very distinctive kind of like, yeah, and the, the, on the slide as well. It's oh, very cool. I should be in my, my kind of like Tom Ford with the, the glasses, the Vuani glasses. Oh, well, Daniel wasn't actually going to use that for the snow scene. He was going to use a PPK, and I'm probably going to get shot for saying this, but they didn't bring a PPK to set. And <laughs> that is what was available. Well, I, that's a cool gun, and I think it, it, it really is. fits the scene as well, I think. It certainly does, and then obviously it's used in just about every sequence after that. Um, so, what's unique about it is the real gun has inserts that go into the grips. And if you actually see, even the stunt, because this is a stunt, it's made out of rubber and I think polyurethane. It's got all these real grip inserts, so that is actually made to fit Daniel's hand. It will fit it like a glove. Wow. Um, it's made by Heckler & Koch. It's called a VP9. Um, again, it's just a very, very comfortable gun. Very cool, very cool. What's next? What's that? This is interesting. Um, this is similar to the one you previously looked at in a holster. Um, this is for, made for the pre-tile seats for Quantum of Solace. And originally, the scene where Daniel is running through the sewers, he'd be carrying a suppressed PPK. But again, the scene gets cut. And if you actually watch that sequence very carefully, after they've had their shootout um, around M and he goes after the uh, so-called bogus MI6 agent, the sequence starts by him holstering the gun. Well, originally he wasn't going, he was going to run after him, pistol in hand. So, again, it didn't make the final cut. Oh, wow. Some more holsters, what have we got here? Well, this is the gun that was used, the gun and holster that was used in the pre type sequence on the building site for Casino Royal. And it's a box standard Vega holster with a blank fire P99 shoved in it. Now, in the last videos we did, uh, the, first, the <coughs> first two visits we had here, you talked about the fact that there was sand and kind of from the actual, from the sets. Yeah, it, it, was, it was ingrained in everything. I mean. <laughs> cool. So the, which, what was the gun that M Malacca threw at Daniel Craig? Was that? Uh, that wasn't a P99 and my brain's going to do me in now, but I can't remember what it was. Any ideas, <laughs> Rob? No, no, no. Ah, well. Yeah, put, I think uh, we'll have to read the book. Yeah, buy the book. <laughs> exactly. Put a link down to, to where you can buy the, buy the book because yeah. that's what we were talking about in the, in the first, mm. first video. Uh, the first the correct answer gets a prize. Ah, yes, <laughs> indeed. But yeah, pop your answers down there if you've got, uh, got an idea of what the, what the gun was. And what's, what's written down, down in here? That's like, oh, Bond number one. Yep. That's so cool. That's so cool. And finally, there's another Galco there. HK USB Compact. I'll get it eventually. Oh, oh spoiler well alert! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let's see. Well, they've answered that it. question. Yeah. Um, and the final, final um, Daniel Craig piece we got there, what's that? This is something really special because when you first look at it this is actually a rubber stunt um don't say that too quickly which okay. was used on spectre and it was used on skyfall but it's got real grips and it's probably the most realistic stunt i've ever seen it's also also got a metal barrel it does look it's amazing work it's so those are actual walther grips then, that's right they? yeah and they just attack oh that's Again, adds to the realism, doesn't it? It certainly does. And so when he, Inspector, he hands over his holster and oh, BBK, yeah. it's that. Oh, wow. But it's also the holster gun on Skyfall when he's running for the train. Crikey, it's a history. <clears throat> yeah. So would they have actually cast that gun without the grips on and added the grips later? rather than take well, off the original grip that would have been you, part of You'd think they would, but they would have been cut off. Oh, seriously? Because 
it would be hard to cast it because inside there you've got a hollow oh, chamber. Have, yes. Then there's a back rod with a spring on it, mm. and all this would then be cast in the silicon. Right. Mm. right and right, you'd right. probably have quite a job getting it off, I would imagine. True. Yeah, so it was point. easier just to take off. Yeah. Just plane it down. Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Right, now, before we say goodbye to this particular table, there's one more, and this is the reason I'm wearing this suit, because just one of the coolest guns in, in Daniel Craig's tenure is this bad boy, this Kapos here, which we see in the, um, the pre-title sequence, obviously, for Spectre. It's just so cool. Bing, and, and, oh. I won't be long. Facciamo scoppiare lo stadio. Stasera alle 6. E che mi dici del volo? Tutto prenotato. E poi che cosa succede? E poi io andrò dal re pallido. Facciamo un brindisi, amico mio. Alla morte. Alla morte. Bottoms up. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, so tell me a bit about this, uh, this gun then. The gun itself is a 9mm Glock 17 pistol. Oh, yes, um, and here, that's the actual pistol there, isn't it? Yeah. Um, the KPOS was basically, it, it's almost like just a stock that bolts onto it. I mean, there, there's many sort of variants of it available now, but at the time, it, it, it was sort of revolution. Nobody knew what on earth it was. Um, made by a company called Fab Defence. Um, when it was actually seen on Spectre for the first time, it was already obsolete. They'd already gone at Regeneration 2. Um, what you see on screen is quite a rare variant. Um, so cool. <laughs> the, the basic difference between what Craig used on screen and what you might have been able to obtain at the time is the logo. And it's the colours reversed. That is the difference. And so when they actually turn up and people say, oh, this is the bomb one, no, it's not, because the company actually changed their logo during production. Really? They swapped the colours over. Oh, mm -hmm. right, so you know exactly. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Well, look, we've got a few more bits and pieces to see, so do bear with us, okay, guys? A few more, um, Daniel Craig, uh, we've got some UMPs, haven't we? We have. We have, and we've got another special guest as well. We have. Okay, let's <laughs> see Okay. One semi-final table of Daniel <laughs> Craig's, because these are all the UMPs. Are these all from Quantum of Solace or...? Casino Royale Casino and Quantum of Solace. Oh. So when were these guns used? Now, this, first of all, this one's a... Is this a stunt or is this...? That is a stunt, uh, similar to the one you looked at before. That's actually the stunt that Daniel uses on the trailer. Oh. And that was filmed in Esso in Chile. So I should be walking like, you know, 
with the shades on. That's that. But is that the bit of the, the photograph that when he's kind of, well, not that's the right. when he's walking it, and he's it's like that actual one? The reason for it is you're not allowed to take machine guns of any description into Chile, even a film company. Seriously. So they had to have stunts made. That's so cool. That's a definite, you know. And, and that's the one where there's the story about where they actually got on location, they didn't have any silencers. And so the silencer was made out of just plumbing supplies, blue plastic plumbing supplies fitted to it. This one here? Yes. If you look, it's got scratches, you can see it's blue underneath. Oh, God, there you go. Oh, okay. Oh, up at the top there. Yeah. There you go. It's just a plumbing, it's a plumbing it, tube. It's a piece of plumbing tube, yeah. Oh, but they, they, because they didn't use the science from the car, that they didn't think they'd be using it anywhere else, and it just didn't look right on the trailer not to have the science on. So, CS's uh, apprentice yet again uh, knocked it up on location, and that's the actual one that appears on the trailer. Oh, that's so cool! So, what have we got now? We got the um, this is is this the one that was used in the, in the um, car chase? In the no, that, that's Casino Royal. Oh, this Casino. So, which uh, the final scene? No. It, it's the Venice shootout. Oh, right, okay. Um, the two, there were two UMPs, and they were used by the stunt guys who were playing the henchmen, and also they used the same gun that Dan used. Oh, okay, cool. Very cool, very cool. Okay, now we've got one more surprise for you before we say goodbye. Okay, well, we'll reveal it now. Okay, let's have a look. So, Grand finale, grand finale, we have, now this is Patrice's gun. It is. Tell us a bit about how this came about, what the, how, it's, how it's pieced together, because it's got a very interesting kind of construction. This was created by CS's apprentice, who's also with the chap, as you know, makes Daniel Craig's holsters. Um, the rifle itself is very similar to the rifle that Pierce Brosnan used in Die Another Day, which is made by a company called Action International, who are British, and that was an Arctic warfare rifle that Pierce never got to actually shoot when he was with Harry Berry, Halle Berry outside the airbase. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. But it's pretty much the same rifle. It's called an, an AE, an Accuracy Enforcement. Been cut down heavily. Um, it was produced for the show and tell for Skyfall, and that's where the producers get to see the, sort of the weaponry and the gadgets that is actually available to the production. And this was created. Sam Mendes absolutely loved it. Daniel Craig liked the idea of a concept of a case gun and he suggested that you know, perhaps Globetrotter, who was his favourite uh, case manufacturer, could actually provide the casing for it. In reality, all they actually did was provided the leather straps and the studding that went up the size, and the rest of it was completely fabricated by the armourer. So it's amazing. We, now we've seen this, yep. this the actual pop-out sights. I mean, this this pops down and then it pops out. That's right. It? Yep. Um, was it which button we pressed for that? I can't remember what the. Uh... You have to pull that pin out and then it, it flies back out. But at the moment, uh... it's in handle mode and it will actually move backwards and forwards along the rail because. As it is now the case, it goes in the middle. As a handle, it moves back to about there, uh, so it would actually work properly as a telescopic sight. Now, when you first see this on screen, you see the sides drop, which unfortunately I don't have. They're only aluminium covered in leather. Yeah, that's dust. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Ola Repace comes up, picks it up, needs somebody to hold on to the base because yeah. this is held together with magnets. So basically that, is now stuck. <laughs> there we go. That separates from there, and that will pull up like this. Wow. And as you can see, the science stays behind. Then what you see him do from a distance, that stock goes up, this comes down. This, which ASP 9mm likes to call the chair leg, mm -hmm. is actually sprung. And what you have to do, it's magnetised, you pull it, you move it forward, and this would normally carry the bolt as well as working as a forward assist. And then the silencer, which has got a magnet on it, then locks onto the end. And again, it's another one of those wonderful things where you don't actually see the transformation on screen, but when you actually see it happen, it's bloody clever. You know, the, the engineering that's gone into it and... It's amazing, th yeah. This part is hollow and that folds over the top of the trigger. It's just... Genius, it's just genius. Can I pick it up? Yeah, sure. That won't stay up. It used to have a ratchet on it and the ratchet died. But, oh, look at that. 
and then if you want, carefully release that. I'll do okay. it for you. Okay. And then it slide back, and that's roughly the shooting position. Find your face. <laughs> and now you're ready to go. Okay, Severine, I'm sorry. Put your head down, darling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the Mondiglione purchaser I want to pop. But isn't it also when he when he fires, he treats it like a bolt action. Well, rifle? the thing is, it is a bolt action rifle, but it's going off like a machine gun, and that means each time you fire a round, you've got to cock the thing to eject the round and then load the next round. So that was. I know the story behind it. The armors did actually advise the director and the producer and the special effects crew what it could and couldn't do. And they just ignored it and decided it's a machine gun. But it's only five shot anyway. But the actual design of it, it's, it's like the AR-10 from Tomorrow Never Dies. It's bloody, it's just engineering genius. It's so clever. And the guy who put this together, I, I really admire him. Um, I admire CS, but they've both just got this talent. It, it, I can't really find the words for it, and I can waffle on all day, but these guys, they are Lazar, they are Q, they're, they're, they're just genius. Thanks so much for sharing, it's so cool, it's very cool. Now we've got one, one last final, absolute final surprise. Only one. Only one, but it's got a lot of history. Okay, we'll see you in a moment. Now, this is an absolutely iconic piece, not directly James Bond related, but we can get there in the end. <laughs> Indeed. Tell us a bit about what this is. Right, that is a Wolfer P38, and it's known as the Uncle Special from the Man From Uncle. The sight works as well, fantastic. Um, so yeah, it's a P38, the, the actual main pistol is a P38, but it's had so much work done to it. Oh yeah, um, basically. Shall I give it to you and <clears throat> we can dismantle it maybe? Yeah, sure. It is a box standard Wolfer P38. It's got custom aluminium grips. Um, it's got a telescopic stock, which will actually collapse with it, and that hinges, but I won't do all that at the moment. The reason this is actually here is because Sean Connery, in publicity photographs, used a Wolfer P38 for Goldfinger. The man from Uncle, until that time, were using a Mauser pistol and the American from Uncle's creator, Sam Rolfe, was looking for a change. And he was actually seriously thinking of a Wolfer PPK rather than a P38. But he saw Sean with this particular pistol and he decided to make this the gun 
for Solo and Kiriakin. Now, the interesting thing about it is Man From U.N.C.L.E. started off originally known as Ian Fleming Solo because Ian Fleming was a consultant and a creator on the project of The Man From U.N.C.L.E. Um, what is really interesting about this is the base gun is a Wolfer P38 AC41. Now, this is a gun that was originally used on Goldfinger. I don't know if it was the gun that Sean used or not, because other people did use P38s on Goldfinger, but it could actually be the gun which inspired the man from Uncle's use of a P38. Um, additional to that, this pistol then went on to be used by either Roger Moore or Richard Burton on the Wild Geese. So it's got quite a Bond sort of connection to it. It could have inspired the man from Uncle. It may have been the one used by Sean. No way of knowing. There's no records to that effect. But it's quite a clever thing because it's one of the things that does come apart. The barrel unscrews, as you can see. It's got rather a large thread because it is externally threaded and real silence guns are externally threaded. Uh, crikey. Wasn't this also um, the gun that Telly Savalas used in Escape to Athena? It was, yeah. But not this actual pistol. Oh, okay. He, he, well, it could have been. He used a suppressed P38. And we believe that it was also the gun that was used on the Wild Beast. So it could have been the one that was used by Telly Savalas. Whoops. But again, I really don't know 100%. That's so cool, though. Because I, I, I had the toy when I was young. You know, the, the yeah, one you could have... Yeah, 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 yeah. It was just, uh, that was a slice of childhood. Right. Oh, well done. That's quite all right. And then, this you have to play around with a bit because these are two magazines fixed together. Oh, that's how they did it. It was only ever a 10 shot. Oh, wow. And then, then it just takes the standard magazine. And that is basically the Uncle Special. Oh, that is so cool. We'll get an overhead shot of that because that is wicked. Uh, but... It's quite heavy. I mean, oh, just no. by itself, the pistol itself. But, you know, the, the P30 is, you know, again, it's an iconic, iconic gun. That's so cool. Thank you so much for showing us all this. And thanks, Rob, for, for, for being with us as well to explain the, the book. If you okay. haven't bought the book, you <laughs> must, I'll put a link down below, you must buy 007 The Armoury. They sell out so quickly. They're on the third edition, third print run, aren't you now? We certainly are. Uh, before we finish, if I may, uh, I just want to embarrass Rob on camera because I'm that sort of person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, here we go. <laughs> Something's happening. You need a tank to carry this or a truck. Whoa. Here is a thank you for all your work on 007 The Armoury. Thank you, John. Oh, thank you. This wow. is the XL version. It's not the cheapo one that you get now. That's the one that's out of print. Is it? Yep. Thank you, sir. You're, You're welcome. welcome. And thank you for everything you've done, because without what you've done, 007 The Armoury wouldn't exist. Oh, legends. Legends, well, both of you. At least I've done something useful. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, from Donk... And from Rob and myself, Blair Ballard, the Bon Vivant. Thank you so much, guys, for just opening your vaults. It's You're most all, welcome. It's yeah. always just like a kid in a candy store coming here to see Donk. We've had loads more and more, uh, more pieces to see. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as, you, as we have. If you have, please do smash the like and subscribe buttons. Turn on notifications so you'll be able to, to see when the next uh, video drops. But from now, this has been Donk, Rob and myself bidding you very bond. Farewell. Stay safe, friends. And again, thank you for staying awake. <laughs> <laughs>if you've enjoyed this video please do consider smashing those like and subscribe buttons do turn on notifications so you know when the next video drops also leave some comments down below as to any videos you'd like to see in the future but for now stay safe friends we'll see you next time